This is a tan elk hair caddis, but in this case, I'm going to use hair from a white-tailed deer rather than elk hair. Start your thread a short distance behind the eye and wind it back to the bend of the hook. This is 8-0 dark brown unithread. Of course, use whatever color best matches the caddis coming off. I'm using a size 16 Daiichi 1100 wide gap hook. The barb has already been mashed. Now, tie in a short piece, about four inches of fine gold tinsel. The smaller the diameter, the better. Select a hackle with barbules about one and a half times the hook gap and prepare it for tie-in. Tie the hackle securely in at the hook bend and then wind your thread forward to about midway on the hook. If you like, wax the thread in preparation for dubbing or put a little on your fingertips. Select some dubbing in a color to match the natural. Dubbing type is up to you. Everybody seems to have their own preference. Don't sweat making a perfectly tapered body as you would with a mayfly imitation. It really doesn't matter here. Now wind your tinsel around the body in an open spiral and tie it off just in front of the dubbing and snip the end. Give a few extra wraps of thread here just to tidy things up. Now, with your hand or hackle pliers, grasp the hackle and wind it forward in an open spiral. I tend to go a little heavy on the wraps here, as this fly works really well in riffles, where more float is usually a good thing. Once you reach the end of the dubbing, tie the hackle in really well. When you're snipping the hackle off, be especially careful not to snip the tying thread. Now, trim the hackle on top of the fly into a little ramp which will make room for and support the wing. With your fingers, separate a small clump of elk, or in this case deer hair, and snip it from the hide. The amount of hair you use for the wing is critical. You really need to experiment to get it just right. Pull out any loose or extra long fibers, then reorient the clump in your fingertips and pull out those little wispy hairs from the butt ends. Using whatever stacking method works well for you, align the hair tips as best you can. And again, pull out any errant fibers from the clump. I like to trim the butt ends a little bit at this point just to keep everything neat and organized. Now, place the clump on top of the fly so that the hair tips extend just beyond the bend of the hook. Make two loose wraps with your tying thread around both the clump and the hook shank. After the second wrap, pull up on the tying thread to secure the clump to the top of the hook. Keep doing this and making wraps until the clump is held firmly in place on top of the hook. Grasp the butt ends of the clump and pull up and then back to expose the eye of the hook. Now you can take a bunch of wraps in front of the clump to really lock it in place. Work the thread back under the clump to make the butt end stand up straight. Once that's complete, whip finish the fly. You may need to snake the thread around a bit to avoid trapping any hairs. Then, clip your tying thread in nice and close to the head of the fly. Grasp the butt ends of the hair and pull up and back a bit. Get your scissors in there between your fingertips and snip the hair into a nice, neat little head. You can now go back and trim off anything you might have missed. This fly is one that really benefits from head cement. I like to apply it to both the thread wraps around the clump and to the whip finished head below. And there it is, a size 16 elk or deer hair caddis.